Astro Burger, I'd love to welcome all of you back to a brand episode of Elden Ring. Link to the previous episode is at the top right hand of your screen, where we finally made our way through the hidden path to the Halic Tree and made it to the consecrated snow fields, which is where we are. So today we shall be taking on the uh, consecrated snow field catacombs. Uh, this catacombs suck, so I hope you guys are going to enjoy my suffering. Anyway. First off, we need to deal with this stupid thing called an imp. Oh yeah, in the previous episode we got our Rivers of Blood Katana and we also defeated um this what's her face invader, uh, Anastasia. And she dropped a somber smithing stone 10 which allowed us to take it to max level. So this is a maxim, max level. Um, yeah, it, it is a max level. Rivers of Blood Katana. And anyway, we have a uh, what's it called? We have a uh, frost tower shooting this frost mist over there. So we need to uh, hit it with an arrow to make to send it down, essentially speaking, so that it doesn't cause us trouble. Okay, let's see if it's down. Yes, it is. So lovely stuff. It's what you love to see. Uh, we are gonna go back to our rivers of blood katana and then we are now going to proceed on forward so uh, these catacombs are really short and sweet but the problem is they have so much they have so much bullshit for a lack of a more pg term so yeah um before we go there because we are gonna need to go up here uh, there is an imp up there so we're gonna jump Oh no. Okay, we are good, we are good, we are good. Okay, so we're gonna go up, pick this up, and then you're gonna jump down. Okay. Just gonna send this first tower back down easy as you like and then now we're gonna move up here now that's the way to the boss uh, pretty straightforward now we have another frost tower over here but this one we won't be sending it down we need it up essentially um so we're gonna run to the side and there is also this uh, cut thing But uh, what I can say is you can't use these frost stars to take them down as long as you just align them towards the uh, frost tower. It will continually take damage to it so it is something that you can't do as you can see. Um, there is also another imp over here as well as you can see something is trying to throw uh, knives at us so what we're gonna do is we're gonna place um crystal darts and the best effect that the crystal darts have is they can um they can cause your enemy to literally become your ally which is really insane so that's what you're gonna be doing at this stage and point in time Okay, so what do we do when this stupid cut goes to the side well, The solution is quite simple to be honest. I hope you guys also noticed that the cut thing is getting attacked by the imp. Which is quite the good thing. So all you have to do if it goes to the side is to hit this and now the ice sprays to the side and yeah, that's going to take care of the imp for us. Not the imp, the statue as well for us. Okay, now the imp has gone. Now the cat dog thing has gone to attack the imp. And this is basically all you're going to keep on doing. We are literally going to use this to help us because it's a fight that you don't want to be involved in at all. I can tell you that much. Ah, 
Ach, so close. Okay, uh, let's see. For me, anyway, I don't see this as cheesing it. I just look at it as literally taking advantage of the resources the game has given you. In my humble opinion, like, if you do not take advantage of the game's mechanics, then what are you doing? I mean, let's be honest. If you're not literally taking advantage of these mechanics, then why bother? Like... Why bother? Why even bother trying to be good if you're not going to literally, literally use every bit of advantage the game gives you? Um, let's see. There is nothing over here. So um, we're gonna pick this up now. There are like so many imps inside this room. It's insane. Quite clearly see. Uh, so what you're going to be doing is running, hit that. Oh no, these two escaped. Surely these three escaped. Yikes. This is not looking good for me. Yeah, it's not looking good for me. Now, the idea was that I was going to try and beat them to come at me, hit the, what's it called, hit the frost tower and have them literally frosted to death. It's the whole premise, but it seems like, it seems the imps are much more faster than I expected, which is fine. We already, we have already taken one of the grave gloves and I don't even use uh troops that are i don't use summons that are upgraded using the grave glove ward so i'm not even i'm not even too disconcerned about not getting the other grave uh glove ward anyway we now we now have to do this from the start again so you know we have to kill this imp that was over here um okay the the frost tower has remained down of course which is good uh, we have to check out this other imp again now uh, we are going to do this again, of course. Of course, this thing appears again, but it got dog, so yeah, we are going to have to do this once more. So, yeah, so let's see. We are just going to have to wait for the tower to take it down again. Just like I said, this is literally using the game's mechanics to help you. Okay, so now you're gonna hit this tower, have it change direction so that it can continually take this guy out for us. Alright, so now the cat is going to fight the imp. Okay, the cat has killed the imp for us. So now, we get the tower to kill the cat for us. Mm. 
then we're gonna put this to the side once more. Of course, the best thing about the crystal darts is it literally converts your enemies to fight against each other. And there, as you can see, huh, the clean rot knight came down to fight the cat. This is just amazing. And there we go. So now we're gonna hit it, send it back up. Now that clean rod knight is supposed to be upstairs, but I'm thinking it had all the commotion and came to investigate and got itself killed by the cat and the frost tower at the same time, which makes our job a whole lot easier, if I do say so myself. Anyway. We now just have to take down some of these imps. Ah, there is another cat dog thingy over there, but we're just gonna strafe this one to be honest. So pick this up, pick this up, missed, uh, pick this up, and we are out of there. Now the clean rot net is supposed to be in this doorway, or actually in this room, rather. So hearing all the commotion he decided to, he just wanted to come and investigate and that's uh, basically speaking what happened. Now this um, tower that's up here, this frost, is still the same tower that's below us that we hit to send back up. Now we need to run down to this side. Really? Hmm. No need for to worry to be honest. So there we go. In my opinion, if you literally don't use these things to your advantage, then there's literally no point in having them. And uh, there are some two clean rot knights inside here, so what we shall do is wake them up and so run back out and literally um, yeah, and do that, and then we're just gonna sit here. Uh, take a breather and watch the frost tower literally do the job for us. Is it a lazy tactic? Yes. Is it smart using the catacombs mechanics? Yes. Would I recommend you do this? Absolutely. Because it saves you a lot of time. It saves you a lot of trouble to, to beat enemies you are not even supposed to be uh, that concerned about to be honest. As you can quite clearly see and we're gonna send this back down and then now we are going to enter in here and casually pick up everything that was you know, the ghost glove watch nine actually right now what we shall be doing is we shall be jumping on this oh no okay that's not good We need to jump on the frost tower for it to take us up because the lever is located a level up. But for some reason we could not land on the frost tower which is uh, very uh, frustrating. I've been getting these, um, I've literally been getting the weapons from these imps all over the place, it's insane. Anyway, uh, send it back down and then you're gonna jump on it. Okay, let's. Oh no, oh no. God damn it. Alright, we're gonna have to do this again. Uh, the boss of this catacombs is one of those uh, grave dualists, so it's a very easy boss fight. It's just that it's. Uh, it's a bit problematic 
for me to get the lever open. It's the only thing that is stopping us from going on to take part in that boss fight. But uh, we'll do it. There is nothing much to be too concerned about. Anyway, let's do this again. Send it down. And then jump on it. And then jump and swing. Why? 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 I don't know why a second swing keeps appearing. Maybe my inputs are too quick. And we're just gonna replace our... What was the name of those things? I've already forgotten the name, but we're replacing them with the cookery. Alright, so up the stair... Oh lord, oh lord, oh lord, oh lord. I literally... My mind skipped. It skipped my mind that the first star was back up. And you can see how much damage it does to you, it's insane. I can't believe it skipped my mind. I'm, I'm usually more careful than this. The crystal dart, you replace the crystal dart with the cookies. I knew I'd get it at some point. Alright, let's try and make this jump, shall we? Alright, so jumps. Okay, jump and swing. There we go, finally. Pick up the grip level 9. Open up the lever. And then we pick up the golden 13. And then now we send this back down. And then we send it back up again. Oh no no, it's actually fine the way it is, never mind. Sending it back up would have shot the ice towards us, which is not what we want. Anyway, inside here we're going to find the grave duelist and yeah. Should be a fantastic matchup. Anyway, we are gonna bring out Mimic. Not that I need Mimic for this fight, I just need him to distract it so that I can do my uh, buffing rituals. I like how Mimic always wants the smoke. Anyway, there we go with Golden Vow and then Flame Grant Miskin. And now that we've done our buffing rituals, it's time to Yeet this man out of existence. And there we go. We get the great glavot, the great grave glavot, and the rotten grave keeper's cloak. Uh, we make sure to pick up the root resin, and we are done with the consecrated snowfield catacombs. Now, uh, let's see, next on the agenda we have a Great Worm to fight. Uh, we are going to be fighting Great Worm Theodorix. We are also going to be fighting an Adri Avatar as well. And hmm, what else are we going to be fighting in this episode? And yeah, we are going to be going to do another short cave with a boss who has a legendary uh, armament. And that's going to be essentially speaking everything about this episode. And anyway, first we are going to go back to the round table hold. And the reason being is I'm actually done using the jellyfish shield. I'm actually going to go replace it with another great shield. Which is something that I should have done immediately got to the consecrated snowfields. I'm not so sure even why I am not so sure why I didn't do that from the offset so the, don't get me wrong the jellyfish shield is it's good it's just that you do not have the utility you need anyway uh let's see when you go to our shields this is a shield that i want to use the spiked palisade shield we really want to use it so we're going to go back and get some more um uh what's it called smithing stone items from the sisters and using this with some items, I we can take it all the way to plus 21. A plus 21 great shield is, is okay 
for the time being anyway it's okay so we're gonna buy some smithing stones and now we're going to go back to get the shield upgraded some more we just need it plus 20 even plus 20 would be fine uh considering that the max level for a normal uh for a normal shield or ribbon is plus 25 so i think even plus 20 will be okay uh let's see back to the shield take it storage plus okay we need to go buy more smithing stones i know it's not the way you'd expect me to be dealing with an episode but needs must needs must there we go smithing stones some more smithing stones in our pockets and this should take us all the way to plus 20 plus 21 plus 20 at the very least and you're gonna see that this shield already has a uh, innate ble bleed on it and we've given it an a frostbite ash of war as well so it's going to make it even better for us okay that's up we are at plus 20 we are at plus 20 we need to take it plus 21 we need to buy uh i need spitting stone seven we need like six more um i'm gonna place this shield now this is going to be our new shield as you can see it has the spikes on its exterior which are responsible for causing the bleed and we've placed the shield bash ash of war on it which we've given it a cold affinity so it causes frostbite so you can imagine that shield its effects are going to be causing both a uh, bleed and frostbite at the same time which is just fantastic yeah there we go that's that's the shield bash ability so yeah i am quite happy with this decision as you can see uh we have frost build up of 141 and blood loss build up of 65 which is more than what my rivers of blood katana does because my uh rivers of blood katana does a 56 blood loss build up while the shield does a 65 which is insane anyway we've made uh the markings so the first marking where we are headed to we need to have the um what's it called we need to have our imp ashes ready because we shall be summoning them uh let's see so we shall be going a bit straight and then turn to our left these are our imp ashes we need them i'm just gonna replace that with i'm gonna place them down here so that i can bring back my uh, what are they called rune items and anyway, yeah, there they go the imp ashes so uh the the idea of this tower is you need to have imp on imp fighting and your imps should be the winners you know um hmm. oh no yeah so you need to be careful for about those electric attacks because they suck but yeah this gives me a very good excuse to show you how good this shield is against the pages so um as you can see it has the normal uh it still has the normal it still has the normal great shield abilities where you can easily block and you need to be very careful about pages So, uh, what you shall be doing, you shall be stopping this caravan. I wonder if this is the caravan that has the uh, night riders or if it's the other one. I'm not so sure. Uh, let's see, we get the flowing curve sword. Okay, this is the one that has the night riders. We're going to have to turn the world stage to nightfall for us to fight the night riders while they move through this with this caravan. So yeah that's good to know anyway uh, let's proceed on in this direction towards the tower so that we can unlock it and get some goodies along our way
All right, so. Oh no. Getting attacked by dogs. While well, I still need to figure out my bearings. Uh, those three guys over there, you do not want to mess with them because they want stuck in the snow turns into a bear and he and we don't want that i'm literally not interested in fighting a bear in snow that is disrupting my vision to begin with so yeah These are some of the things that we do not need to have happen. Anyway, ah, uh, here we go. This is we get our imps out, and they need to be the ones to kill these imps. So I think that's enough. Uh, the first attack that we've had. I do not want to be the one to kill this imp because it will defeat the purpose of the entire um of the entire tower. It has to be my imps that take this other imp down. All right, there we go, and the seal doors open. So now we can move on in, and okay, let's remove this marking, and yeah, we can go and figure out how to. Well, we can go pick up our prize. That is. There we go. Right, so this is a very good talisman for people who are casters and as such, so if you're ever looking for a pretty cool talisman, that's one. Anyway, next up we are going to be going to fight the, what's it called, what's it called, the Adri Avatar. Next on our list is the Adri Avatar, so uh, the marking that we have is going to take us towards um, was it called? Seems to take us towards a teleporter that will literally teleport us immediately to where the artery avatar is, and we are going to be having a lot of fun with fighting him or it. Again, the consec the consecrated snow fields are just the absolute worst because most of the times you can barely see where you are headed. Okay, we need to head a bit more straight and then a bit more straight again and then turn to the left. I think at this point here yeah, we can now just start turning to the left and moving on forward and just hope for the best. Of course, uh, the moment you start hearing the wolves, you know we know we are in the right direction. Uh, there is a red wolf of Radagon and I'm not lying, I am not going to fight. There it is actually, speaking of red wolves. And yeah, I am not going to be fighting a red wolf of Radagon. Not in this snow. Ha, <laughs> iframes. Iframes. Yeah, I'm not going to be fighting a red wolf of Radagon in the snow. Where I can't see properly because of the mistiness of the snow. It's just not happening. Um, yeah, so too bad for that wolf. It seemed to be in the mood for a huge fight, and I wasn't, so you know, sucks to be it. Okay, so here we are. The teleporter literally just took us across the river so that we could get to this other side. And now, the only thing that we need to do is we are, we are at a minor artery, as you guys can see. so all we need to do is go fight the Atri Avatar. Really? Really? Anyway. I want to show you guys something about the shield bash. Cool, right? I mean, awesome, right? Anyway, uh, I'm looking for the Atri Avatar. 
just need to find out where it is okay here we have our summon sign so i guess we're getting closer to it uh let's see we're going to bring back our runak so that we can activate our uh what are this thing called not a golden rune Great rune, yeah, so that you can activate our great rune. Man, the, the terms just keep escaping my mind, it's insane. Anyway, before we send Mimic out there, I'm going to start doing our buffing ritual. So, Golden Vow, which also works on Mimic as well, as you can see. And then we also do the Flame Grant instant for ourselves. And now I'm going to get this stupid thing's attention. Uh, the rot does nothing to it because it's one of those rot uh, artery avatars as you can see it's a putrid artery avatar now what it doesn't know is i have done some buffing rituals and yeah as you can see we are literally destroying this thing and you're done that was like the shortest fight i've ever had We get our cool 160,000 rooms, we get the thorny cracked tier and the ruptured crystal tier. And yeah, we can now move over to the next region, which is right around here-ish. And then from there we shall be going to a cave where we shall be finding that legendary weapon. But right outside the cave we are going to be dealing with a great worm. Theodorix, which is going to be quite the adventure as well. Uh, there are some items over here that we can still pick up along the way, so that's what I'm doing. Like the warming stone, I am going to fight, be fighting these guys. As you can quite clearly see, the shield bash is just amazing. I can't get enough of that amazing ability because I am actually proking um, bleed and frostbite at the same time, which is just fantastic. Uh, okay, so right over here there should be a scarab that we can kill, and then as we go down here there should be where just going down we are going to be picking some loose items. Basically speaking, there's even no need for me to um. Uh, put any markings around because all you're going to be doing is simply descending and getting items descending getting items descending getting items and uh, oh man I don't know, I, f I find it awesome that I can now use my shield as a weapon. Alright, so we move on forward. And right over here. Yeah, as you can see, right up there we have our scarab that we need to destroy. just seated calmly on the top so we're gonna hit it with a kukri hmm here it is really who's teaching albanuric spells Oh man, okay, that scarab decided to disappear and go back to the top and to be honest, I'm already lost interest. It's just a somber sniffing it. I have a ton of them that I'm not even planning to use. So Yeah, if you want to get the somber sniffing stone, it, you just beat the scarab and all is well. And uh, we get our nascent butterflies and we continue moving on forward down. Uh, I'm just following this path. I'm ignoring the Albanerics because they literally won't do anything to me, to be honest. 
Alright, so we are going to be descending from here. So, um, let's see. Huh. You are a dedicated one, aren't you? Stupid Albaneric. Anyway, uh, let's see. I think we can get on top of Torrent. And then just casually drop down. Okay, we fell towards the giant crabs. Uh, we just need one of them, so smack that one. And then we need them to break this up so we can get some more smithing stones. Look at how fast they are. Oh god. Anyway, they have done their purpose. Um, this is also the arena where we shall be fighting Great Worm Theodorix. He's literally like right around the corner, so that's why. But that's where we shall be heading on to next. But first, I need to pick up my smithing stones. Um, excuse me. We need to pick up our smithing stones. Really? Okay. Thank you. Smithing stone 8, which is 3 of them, which is exactly what you'd like to see. Uh, let's see. Now we have a stupid uh, octopus over here. Again, iframes. Okay. So this is the cave that has the legendary armament as well. So... This is the cave of the Fallen. Yeah, it's the one that also has that. So we're going to be picking up the set of grace. And the reason we're picking up the set of grace is in case we die to Theodorix, we don't have to make that long journey uh, back up here. Anyway, let's level up some more. Push our dexterity to 29. It's on the fast track towards level 40 and 50. Uh, don't worry, this uh, ice doesn't break. Okay, we can't fast travel back to our grace. Um, let's see. Um, okay, I can't jump from here. I'm guessing we have to use the dragon. Uh, this is a dead dragon, it doesn't come back to life, which is sad. But at the same time, it would have been weird to be fighting a dragon in such a tiny cave. What is not weird is, is that dragons actually used to um, live in caves in ancient mythology, stunning terms you know huh, this thing is actually eating up its arm to try and heal up uh, we don't like it. we don't like a smart us and yeah as you guys can see the shield bash amazing utility i think the moment i was starting my journey to the hidden path of the hallig if i had such a if i had this uh shield with the shield bash, i think my life would have been much much easier anyway this is great from theodorix and so what we shall be doing is evading his magma of course um i i need time to do my buffing routine and he's still focusing on me which is not ideal oh yikes i need mimic to grab his attention for just one minute or one second okay there we go thank you mimic so Great on Theodoric is a very dangerous magma one. So what we need to do is we need to get some two status effects on him simultaneously. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm trying to get him rot beaten so that Scarlet Rot can continually decrease his health over time. And he's already rot beaten. Oh mimic with the wonderful bleed proc, you love to see it. Now, as those two continue to tango, I'm going to simply Golden Vow and then Flint grant me strength. And now that I have done my buffing routine, and I'm not so sure who Theodorix is attacking because there's literally no one there. But yeah, now that we've done a buffing routine, it's time for us to cause some bleed. Oh god. Alright, it's time to help Mimic out with some bleed attacks on Theodorix. Yikes. Oh no. 
Wow, if the second attack landed, it would have been curtains for us. Now, the good thing about having both bleed and rot working simultaneously, as you can see the amount of damage you're doing on Theodoric, is that if you can stack up uh, multiple status effects, it just makes the fights last half as long, you know, which is quite a thing. And we get three dragon hearts and we finally get the last, not the last dragon breath, we have one more left to get, but this is the last improved common uh, dragon breath. So this is the, like the improved, um, what is it called, magma breath. So yeah. Okay, so with these wonderful runes, let us increase our dexterity to 30, you'll love to see it. Um, I think we could uh, use a rune item to get another level if possible, maybe, I don't know, but first we're gonna leave this wonderful place and then we shall be going to, um, what's it called, uh, we shall be going to a dragon communion church which will allow us to get the new magma breath. It's so insane how non-problematic this giant octopi became once we upgraded our... Once we changed the sh to a shield which has shield bash, like... It's unbelievable. And we're going to go to the Church of Dragon Communion. We're just going to look for it. It should be somewhere here in Kaelid. And it should allow us... There we go the cathedral of dragon communion and it should allow us to get the improved magma breath as well now the hope is that we can get the hope is that we can always use this magma breath to our advantage especially in the near future where we shall be uh dealing with especially if you are going to be dealing with some immobile bosses just spewing magma all over the place to have them wallow in it is fantastic so as you can see uh here we are going to we're actually also going to pick borealis mist and then also going to pick theodoric's magma yes and that's us just simply eating dragon hearts in order to attain uh, dragon abilities which is just amazing in my opinion in my humble opinion anyway uh let's see we are going to remove uh mm, let's see which which ability do i want to remove so we're gonna place uh the ice breath in place of flame of frenzy albeit um, i'm not yet um, as you can see that's the ice breath of course it's gonna be proctoring a lot of frostbite here and there but yeah i am thinking that's pretty much it now we need to go back to coastal side cave and this time we are literally now going to do the coastal side cave in its totality we shall go in we shall beat up the inhabitants we shall um beat up the idiot that has the legendary weapon and then we shall be ending this episode right there and then which is quite fantastic in my opinion again it's just a humble opinion and then from there then on we shall move on over to the next episode where we shall be doing the field bosses i.e the night riders yes in plural they are but these are going to be our very last night riders and we're also going to be doing the what is it called the final death right bird as well which is going to also be the last one and yeah after that we'll simply go to the halic tree and and then once we're done with that we can do mogwin palace and then feru mazula and then end the game Anyway, these are the type of enemies we have around. Wait, that did not kill you. That's actually insane. I would have thought that would have killed him with the attack and counter attack. 
I love shield bar. I never get the freezing grease. It's amazing that right now you can't kill uh, things with a max level weapon like ourselves. Like we literally cannot one shot these things. Shield bash. Repost. You just love to see it. You just love to see it. You just love to see it, not to see it. You just love to see it. Anyway. Uh, we proceed on forth. We just rolled in through here, get some more freezing grease. You love to see it. Another item that your boy will never use. And then we are going to move on over here. Now I'm going to be looking for my way around. Because it's... I'm not gonna lie, this is a very straightforward cave, but it's also very easy to backtrack and lose your way inside here so that's why i'm moving all over around um i believe in the episode where we were fighting the fire giant i said that we weren't ever going to be using my golden hellbird i lied the golden hellbird is never going to be retired it's only now going to be very niche it's going to be useful in very specific circumstances that's that's the realization that i've come to at this point Shield bash, shield bash, shield bash. Whoa! Okay, we crouch to get some more stamina back. Oh boy! Uh, whenever your stamina is running out, it's normally advisable for you to just crouch a bit. It regens your stamina faster. Um. That's why I was crouching there a bit to just try and regain as much stamina as possible. I really need to put more points into endurance now that I'm thinking about it. But my dexterity is already like at close. It's it's on the way to level 40. It's all I can say. And I kind of want to get it to 50 along with my stamina, not necessarily along with my strength as well, so that I can have them both at 50. We end with the great rune active that will be 55 which is their soft cups uh, my was it called my um was it called my vigor is uh, it's at 57 and with the great rune active puts it at a 62 which again is past the soft cup level of 60. uh i really want my strength and dexterity to be at the soft cup level where upgrading it further really does not see you anymore returns like necessary and more strength and dexterity means i can kill enemies for less hits you know which also means it won't be as detrimental to my stamina as possible and then after that i can i can't no to be honest after that i can only see myself upgrading my faith all the way to 60 which is the soft cap and then again to 40. to be honest i don't think i'm ever going to be upgrading my stamina for a long time to be honest like I have come this far with this weaker level of stamina. Doesn't bother me in the slightest that I have that weaker level of stamina. So that, that that's what I'm trying to say. Uh anyway, that aside. Mm, let's see. How about we try the Borealis Dragon Ball? Okay, we are already out of our Dragon Ball. Not ideal. But he is, um, what's it called? He is. He is frost beaten, which is what we wanted. Shield bash. Shield bash. Oh no. Oh no. You died. If there isn't a more iconic phrase in Elden Ring than you died. And anyway, it's fine. We will just use our Wanderer's Physic Flask and run back and take our whatever. Take our runes. It's no biggie to be honest. I 
Yeah, so we'll just simply run back, take our runes, and then leave for the next region, which should be quite easy to. I don't know. The next episode is really, really going to be short. It's literally us just fighting the night riders and um, what's what's the other dude's name? Uh, in the next episode, we shall only be fighting the night rider and uh, um, what's his face? The night rider and um, the death rider. But literally speaking, those are the only two things we're doing in the next episode. It should be a very short one, to be honest. And the episode after that, we shall be finally doing Odina Liturgical Town which will lead us to the Halic Tree as well well uh, along with that m those mines are to the west of the map as well we need to go in there so that we can get so many smithing aids at our disposal and yeah once we're done with that we I'm thinking we do the I, I don't want to do the Halic Tree the Halic Tree is really hard like I'd rather we do Morgwin Palace first and then after we are done with Morgwin Palace we can do um, Faruma Zula actually and then once we're done with Faruma Zula we can now go back to the Holy Tree. By, by the time I'm done with Morgwin Palace and Faruma Zula I should be I should have upgraded my levels so much that it won't really not matter it won't really matter how far whoa these guys are hard hitting yeah but all i'm saying is by the time we are done with farumazula and mogwing palace we should have upgraded our characters so much that we can handle uh the halic tree which is ideally the hardest uh legacy dungeon in the game so if we are able to be done with those at the same time man those final bosses won't have a clue what hit them Anyway, uh, here we are. We get the another rune arc to replace the one that we used. We are literally we are literally surviving on one rune arc at this point in time, which is absolutely not ideal. But it doesn't matter because um, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. I don't need a rune arc. It's it's one of the reasons why I decided to keep upgrading certain aspects to their soft cap levels, regardless, so that if I do not have a rune arc um, active it won't um it really won't affect me in any sense of the word because i'm already at the soft cap so even if my great rune isn't active it's like <laughs> okay whatever anyway uh we're gonna be descending down here as easy as you like now these are red jellyfish which means they are already uh they are already aggressive towards us despite us not doing anything to them now i'm not one that likes attacking jellyfish because they look like very floppy balloons now these jellyfish have not realized that i have not been attacking them in the world but they don't care they are like they still keep attacking me despite the fact that i never attack them anyway uh we're gonna jump down here And then you're gonna jump across and then you're gonna jump across again you're gonna make sure we pick up this freezing grease because you wouldn't want to miss freezing grease and then right here is where the boss is so uh we're going to be doing some okay let's bring out black knife tish Whoa, 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 oh no, oh no, what, excuse me, that one strike took away half my health, what the hell, no, 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 that, that's, that, you guys saw that, right, one swing of that sword took away half my health. No, that's not right. Okay. 
I did not think that one sword swing was powerful enough to take away um, an entirety of half my health, but here we are. Anyway, uh, we've started back at the cave, uh, not the cave, but at the stake of Marika in order to go back and get my runes that we've lost thanks to this stupid thing. Um, I think I'm moving in the wrong direction, which is not ideal. Uh, okay, yeah, right. So we're just going to have to run past the jellyfish again. Um, to the whole man. These jellyfish are angry with me. Okay, yeah, this is where we were. This is definitely where we were. So we're gonna jump in here. Then we're gonna jump across. Huh, this jellyfish decided to follow me down here. You know, this is... Blame yourself, jellyfish, because I don't like attacking jellyfish to begin with. So, you know, blame yourself for being so stubborn with it. And anyway, jump back down. Here we are. Okay, back to the boss room. This time round, I'm gonna bring out Mimic. I'm not saying that Tish is bad, it's just that I need her to be at max level before I can start using her like that. And anyway, Mimic, we're gonna need you to take out this dude. Okay. Okay, missed. 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 Bring back our runes. There we go. Really? Okay, please tell me you guys can see how hard hitting that sword is. Like, it makes no sense how hard that sword is. Okay, Mimic in for the win. And we get the Golden Order Great Sword, which is another uh, legendary armament that we need. We get a cool 93,000 runes for our travels as well, which is pretty cool as well. Now we're gonna go back to. Well, let's first activate this rune item because we want it we need it right so we activate that and we now go back to the site of chris where we shall be um in every essence of the word we shall be spending our runes to get ourselves up another level uh I'm not gonna lie, I'm still going to keep on upgrading our dexterity and strength, though that's my main focus for now. And then once we are done with our dexterity and strength, we shall pump everything into faith. And once we are done pumping everything into faith, we shall proceed on to pump everything into Akin. And then from then on, I can start splitting between endurance and mind. Intelligence is just going to remain at a 9, to be honest. I, I don't need any intelligence uh, abilities. Anyway, our dexterity is not 31, which is amazing. It's just amazing in itself. Uh, let's see. Uh, so now let's go fight off. Okay, no, actually we can travel out of here. We're going to go back to the uh, table of lost grace at the round table hold. And then we're going to see if we can pick up some upgrades for the likes of Tish because I I I have everything to take Tish to level 10 plus 10 but I do not have the grave the ghost glove with 8 which sucks because I wish I did we would have been able to take Tish to max level anyway uh, let's see we need uh, some basic stone 7 for that uh, no, not just some smithing stone, just the regular smithing stones. What am I talking about? Uh, we have got the Nagakiba a bit. The region which we are going to ne next after the after dealing with the Night Riders and the Death Rite Bard has a lot of smithing stone aids which we need for upgrading to max level. Ah, uh, we could take Red Bear Night Ogre all the way to max level, but I don't want to. I want to take T. As you can see, this is now taking redman ogre to the next level is possible but i want to take tish all the way which 
Man, it sucks that I can't for now, but we will eventually. No, I came back to the round table hold, which is not what I want to do. We want to go back to the inner snowfield in the consecrated snowfields right here in a snowfield grace and this is where we shall be ending off this spectacular episode so i hope you guys have enjoyed yourself with me in the, along this journey i hope you have enjoyed all the fights but this is where this episode comes to an end so until then stay safe be smart be kind hey! tell somebody you love them today and i shall catch all of you in the next episode hey! bye guys